Our next topic in the Industrial Revolution is big businesses and corporations, and we'll begin to touch on the stock market. Growth of big business. During the Industrial Revolution, businesses began to change rapidly. Prior to the time period, most businesses were owned by one individual or a few partners, started by an entrepreneur. Therefore, businesses were fairly small. In the early 1800s, we didn't see any huge, huge businesses like we do today. An entrepreneur, some of your parents may be entrepreneurs or relatives or family friends. An entrepreneur is simply a person who starts a new business to make a profit. And the key is right there. If a business doesn't consistently make a profit, it's not going to be a business for a very long time. While an individually owned company or partnership might work for smaller business, businesses, it was not going to work for large businesses such as railroads. These were large businesses which needed a lot of money and it was more than individuals and partnerships could afford. Therefore, we begin to see the growth of corporations. We're gonna focus on corporations because more and more companies become corporations and also begin to sell stock during this time period. <coughs> Excuse me. Additionally, Americans are gonna to begin to buy and sell stock. Um, with this topic, stock market can get really, really confusing. We're gonna keep it on a very basic level and if you pay attention and follow along, you will understand the basics of corporations in the stock market. It's not overly difficult. It can get difficult, but we won't get into that. Uh, we're not doing the Ed puzzle. <laughs> so let's start with some definitions. Corporation. Corporation is a business owned by many investors. And I put in parentheses, it's based on stock. Sometimes they're uh, known as public companies. If you can buy stock in it, it is a corporation. <coughs> Most of your big nationwide companies that you guys think of, your Amazons, your Apples, your Coca-Colas, Tesla, stuff like that. These are corporations and you can buy stock. If you can't buy stock in it, it's known as a private company. These typically are local businesses. If you think up in the village, places like The Tavern and Mr. Good Sense and Hen House and The Bakery, um, the little ice cream shop, Chill. These are our private companies. You can't buy stock in them. But your big ones, you can. Capital, easiest word all day. Capital is simply money. When we're talking about finances, capital is money. Money is capital. Stock, stock or shares or pieces of a company. <coughs> Anyone can buy shares in a company. You could buy shares as long as you have the money to do so. I'll stop right here and say companies, big companies are made up of hundreds of millions of shares or in some cases, even billions of shares. So while you may own one stock, one share of stock for Amazon, you are an owner, but you're a very small owner. They're not gonna call you up and ask you your opinion on things. Another term is IPO. <coughs> Excuse me, can't stop coughing. An IPO is an initial public offering. This is the first time a company sells its stock. So this is when they go from private to public. This is when they're going from a smaller or maybe a medium-sized company and they want to make that jump. They need lots and lots of money. Maybe they want to expand. Maybe they want to build a new factory. Maybe they want to go overseas. They don't have the money to do this. So what they began to do is they sell stock in a company. Stockholder, another pr pretty simple term here. A stockholder is a person that owns stock in a company. Again, you own one share of Amazon, you are a stockholder. You buy your stock from the stock broker. In order to be a stock broker, you have to have a license, kind of like teachers or doctors or nurses have licenses. In order to sell stock or buy stock from people, you have to be licensed. So what we do to buy stock in today's day and age, this is very simple. We go out and find a stock broker. And you might say, well, I don't know any stock brokers. You go online. Um, in the last 15 or 20 years, you've been able to go on to different platforms, different companies out there. <clears throat> you basically create a username, dump mo how much money into the account, and then say, I want to buy five shares of Amazon. You click the submit button. It sends it to one of these online trading houses and they buy it for you. So that has become easy. Two more terms, bear and bull. One's good, one's bad. Let's start with the bad. A bear market is a period when the stock market is going down in general. It doesn't mean every company is going down. What they do is they take averages. They average the stock prices of all the companies every single day. 
and they look at those from day to day. And when we have, if it goes down in one day, we don't call it a bear market, but if it's going down over the period of months, it's turning into a bear market. It doesn't mean every company's stock is going down. Some companies can do very well during a bull market, or sorry, during a bear market. It just means the average overall is going down. A bull is the opposite. This is when the stock market's going up. This is what we want. Um, does this mean every company is going up? Absolutely not. Some companies could be failing miserably in the middle of a bull market, but it's a period of, of good times financially. The way you remember this bull market, a bull has horns, horns point upward. And this is a picture actually in New York City on Wall Street where the stock markets are located. <coughs> and there is your bear market. Okay, why do individuals buy stock? Very, very simple. Three words, to make money. I can't think of any other reason why you would purchase stock other than to make money in it. So how do you make money in it? Well, there's two different ways. And this is going to sound really simple. And on some levels, it's very, very simple. Four words. I gave you more than four. Buy for a low price, sell for a high, higher price. Let's say Amazon <coughs> is $200 per share. You buy it today for $200. A month from now, it's $250. And you say, you know what? I don't think it's going to go any higher. You sell it. You made $50. Again, very, very simple, but we're dealing with the future. There's no guarantee in the future that Amazon stock is going to go up. It could go up, but it also could drop from 200 to 150. We're dealing with the future, so we're dealing with uncertainty. Um, you can buy and <laughs> sell stock at any point in time. There's no requirement on how long you hold on to that stock. I could buy Amazon right now and sell it in 10 minutes if I wanted to. When a person sells their stock, this often confuses you guys. When they sell their stock, who are they selling it to? So let's say I own 10 shares of Amazon. I want to sell it. I'm not selling it to Amazon. Amazon does not buy the stock back. What you're doing when you sell today for 200, you are selling it to another person that wants to buy it for $200. And of course, you're not doing this directly. Your stockbroker is doing this, but you sell and someone else is buying. If there aren't any buyers, you have to hold on to it. This is really, really rare. Unless you have, like, let's say, millions and millions of shares of a particular stock, you may not be able to sell it all at once. But typically, if you have 10, 20 shares, you can sell it in a matter of minutes and it'll go through. The last way you can make money, and not all companies do this, it's dividends. When a company is doing really well, they make profits. In a dividend company, what it does is it takes its profits and it pays it back to the people that own stock. Not all companies do this. If they do pay dividends, they usually pay them four times a year, every quarter, and they pay them out per share. And I think Apple's a dividend stock now. They might pay 75 cents a share. And you think, well, it's only 75 cents. That's not that much money. But if you own 100 shares, that if my math on that's right, that's $75. They pay that out four times a year. That's $300. It's